adoration that is in his name. Let's give him all the glory this morning because he deserves it. He is wholesome, he is glorious, he is the almighty. He is the head of him of Israel. He is the keeper of our soul. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let's exalt his name. Let's magnify him. Let's adore him for his worthy of praise. You are worthy, worthy of our praise. You are the most high. You are worthy. You are worthy, worthy of our praise. You are the most high. You are worthy. You are worthy, worthy of the honor. You, you are the most high. You are worthy. You are worthy, worthy of our glory. You are the most high. You are worthy. You are worthy, worthy of our praise. You are the most high. You are worthy. You are worthy, worthy of our worship. You are the most high. You are worthy. Let us worship him. Let him praise this to him. Let's adore him. Even for his worthy, he's worthy of all the glory, he's worthy of all the honor, he's worthy of all adoration. The one who has kept us, this is the third day of the month of July. The Lord who has kept you has not allowed spiritual battles, spiritual warfare to take your life or the life of your loved ones. The Lord who has been good to you, who has been good to me, the one who has been faithful, he has been faithful in all our warfare, in all our fears. The Lord has kept us. He has shielded us. He has been our strength, our buckler, our everything. Worship him this morning. Let's give him all the adoration. Thank you for bringing us to another Saturday as members of Victoria Intercessory Prayer Ministry. The Lord who has kept us to see the first Saturday in the month of July. The Lord who has not woken us up this morning with sorrows in our heart, because I know if you woke up with anything that is amiss this morning, you probably will not remember this prayer line or that we have a power of God program. But God who has caused your life to fall in pleasant places, he has allowed everything to go normal, even with you this morning, because there is nothing that is normal in this world. Let's exalt God, our Father, if not for him, where we will be? If not for him who has been on our side, where will he be? What will our Israel now say? But the Lord who has been on our side, the Lord who has been the one fighting our battles for us, we are in constant battle, whether we believe it or not, but the one who has kept us. He has not allowed us to become the victim of wickedness of men. He has not allowed the spiritual warfare to take it, to, to give us a, an unbelievable blow that would have wrecked our life or send us to hell or send us even to untimely day. Let's just thank you. Say, Father, I thank you for all that you've done for me. Thank you for the gift of life that you have given me. Thank you for the gift of life, the gift of health. Thank you for the gift of your protection. Oh, Daddy, I am grateful to see this first Saturday, this third day of July. I am grateful myself, my family, my loved one, all the members of my family, all those that are connected. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the grace in Jesus' mighty name. We're going to thank him, not just for the grace to be alive, but to be alive in him. To be alive in him. You know, many people, I tell people when I say, Lord, let's thank God for the salvation as, of our soul and that we have not made the shipwreck of our calling. Many have made the shipwreck of their calling. Many, because of the battles of life, are, have turned back like them as. They are forsaking God. They have loved the things of this world. You know, but God has kept you and I, He has kept us in him. It is by his grace that we have the helmet of salvation and that we are still in him. You know, when Sammy wrote in, when David wrote in Psalm 51, he said, take not the joy of your salvation from me. Let us thank God that the joy of salvation is still intact. You know, you do wake up and say, okay, why should I be in this God? Who, I mean, what has this God done for me anyway? Oh, why should I continue to serve God? You know, like some people have asked me in the past, oh, why do you worship this God? You know, I want us to thank him. Say, Father, I thank you for the salvation, the helmet of salvation that you have given me, that this is constant. Thank you because of my helmet of salvation, you know, which is our number one uh, armor of this spiritual warfare. Let us thank you. Say, Father, thank you that you are still keeping me in you. Thank you because you did not allow the troubles of life to take me away from you or to take me back to Egypt. 
Thank you, Father, for salvation of my soul, the salvation of my family. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Shall we pray? Father, I do not take your mercy for granted that I'm still in you. I thank you for the grace you have given me to be in you. Thank you for the salvation of my soul. I appreciate you. I exalt your name this morning. I give you all the glory, non dominion and adoration. Thank you for keeping me in you still. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Rose of Sharon. Thank you, Yahweh of Judah. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you adoration. Be thou resulted. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to take this song. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Let us say, Father, I thank you because you are my God. I thank you because you have been my God since ages past and you continue to be my God. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you because you are my God and you continue to be my God. Thank you because I will never know any other God. Thank you because my family will never know any other God. Thank you because my children will you never know any other God. Thank you because you are my God. Lord, you will always be my God. Thank you because you are my God. The Bible says in Isaiah, in Psalm 48, verse, I believe verse 8, it says, for this God is our God. Forever he will be our guide, even unto the end. Let us thank him. Say, Lord, thank you because you are my God. Forever you will be my God unto the end of my days. Ye kabo zakatalia. Ye zeke leba kori erebo zandagalia. Ma zeke Psalm 48, verse 14. He said, for this God. For this God, he is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death, even unto death. Say, Father, thank you for you are my God forever. You will be my God unto the, until, until death in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I thank you because you are my God, the God of my family, the God of my children. Oh, Lord, I thank you because forever you will be my guide even unto death. You will be my guide. You walk closely with me. You will not live and abide on me. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray we're going to go before the Lord and ask for mercy in any area that we are falling short of his glory and desires. Lord, arise and have mercy upon us. Arise and have compassion upon us. Oh, there's no volume. Somebody said there's no volume. Is that, is that true? That you, Can you hear me? Oh, my. Can anybody hear me? Praise the Lord. Can, can anyone hear me, please? If you can hear me, can you wave? Because I got a chat here saying there is no volume. Please yeah, can we can hear me? you. We can hear you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. All right. So let us just go before the Lord in any way that we are falling short of his glory, that he will forgive all our sins, that he will cleanse us from all filthiness of the flesh. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we have some mercy this morning that you will please forgive all our sins in any area that we are falling short of your glory. That you arise, show us mercy, arise, show us compassion. Oh Lord, arise, have mercy upon us, have compassion upon us. Forgive all our iniquity, all our errors, all our sins. In the name of Jesus, show mercy, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray, we're going to pray, Lord. Even as I've come in this 24 hour, we got Lord Jehovah. Lord, come and fortify me in the name of Jesus with every hammer, the old hammer of Christ that I need, whatever, amen, whatever, whatever hammer, whatever weapon that I've lost until this very morning, Lord, my Father, my God, come and recoup me. Jehovah, recoup me. Jehovah, recoup me in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, recoup me. Jehovah, recoup me. Jehovah, recoup me. Jehovah, recoup me. In the name of Jesus, we want to be a casualty of this spiritual warfare. Oh, Lord God Almighty, come and 
fortify me with my hammer, with the right hammer. Whatever hammer I'm missing this morning, oh Lord, come and release upon me. Come and forgive unto me afresh. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The reason why I love new month, new days, new week, new year is because it's a beginning. It's an opportunity for a new beginning. And it is a new month. We're in the third day of this month. Oh, I want us to pray, Lord, any harm or any weapon that I've lost, maybe due to sin or carelessness of God, my Father and my God, come and recoup me. Lord, recoup me. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray. Marco Zandaga, Lord, I return to you. That you, oh God, that you will recoup me and give me my hammer. Any armor that I've lost, any weapon that I've lost, Lord Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, that you release upon me again. In the name of Jesus, recover for me, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, and cover me up again. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our Father, we thank you for this 24 hour power of God. Lord, as we continue this weekend, even in this 24 hour, go with us. That you come and help us. That you re-energize us, re-equip us, oh God, in the name of Joe, we shall not become victims of spiritual warfare. Your grace will answer for us, oh God. Lord Jesus, as you won in the battle of life, Lord, you cause us to win as well in the mighty name of Jesus. That is strengthen us, oh God, in this battle. We shall not become a victim. We shall not become a mismatch in the hand of the devil in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord God Almighty, fortify us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I welcome everyone again to this month 24 hour with God. And I thank every member of Victoria Intercessory Army for joining us this morning as we do every month. The Lord God Almighty will empower us everything that we need for this month of July. Heaven will release upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. And we shall not fail, we shall not falter in the mighty name of Jesus. By the time we are, we are in August, next month, all of us will be, will be alive. None will be missing. No, we'll be injured. No, we'll be in the hospital. No, we'll be in coma in the name of Jesus. We shall all be alive and well to see the end of this year and the years beyond in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We'll be talking about spiritual warfare and the scripture is taken from the book of Philip, um, Ephesians chapter 6. We are very much familiar with that scripture. We are very much familiar with that scripture. However, I'd like to read, uh, uh, I'd like to read uh, from New Living Translation, I'd like to read Ephesians chapter 6 uh, from verse 10. It said a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's hammer so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Before I continue, I just want to say something. Say we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemy, even though we know there's some enemy that we know, you know, who are flesh and blood. But let's not remember, let's remember that there is a power, there is a force behind any enemy that we see, any physical enemy. Is he our, I mean, friend, colleague at work, uh, uh, maybe relative, you know, it is not them, the, the enemy that we are fighting is the devil because there are two powers in this world, God, power, and Satan. If it's not God, it's the devil. So it's, it's the enemy, it's, it's, it's the devil that moves, that sets people to war against us. So I just want to just remind us, I know we know that, but just remind us to be to be mindful. You know, when, oh, I'm blocking my enemy. And then we focus on someone, it's actually a spiritual warfare. It's the power and the spirit behind that person's actions. Praise the living Jesus. So verse just said, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's hammer so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and um, body, uh, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of this, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times. And on every occasion, pray the spirit at all times and on occasion. Stay up and be persistent for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan. 
that the goodness is for Jews and Gentiles alike. Praise the Lord. Another thing that I can take away from this today, you know, is reminder that the Bible says in nothing, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Also, verse 18 says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. So as we give thanks, we pray to God. In whatever circumstances we find ourselves, we pray. That is one weapon that we cannot do without. Amen. And then we know we've talked about the sword of the spirit. But briefly this morning, I know a lot of people have been talking. I was still going to talk with this spiritual warfare. I just want to speak on some topic, some subtopic. You know, there are battles. There is constant battle that we're engaging. Whether we believe it or not, there is battle going on. You know, I, I, I tell my children, I say, whatever you see physically, it is not physically. It, it, a force existed in the spiritual realm before it stands physically. There is always a, 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 a spiritual connotation to every event, to every issue in life. So we're in constant battle. We're engaged in constant battle. Romans 3.23 say, and there is in what battle? So I would like to identify the inward battle that we are also engaging now and then talk about the, the physical battle. Psalm, Romans 7.23 says, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me to captivity the law of sin, which is in my members. So in this warfare that are warfare even within ourselves, there are things that we're engaging in. There's constant warfare that can also determine the success of our physical battle. If our inward, if the, 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 the warfare inwardly, if you do not master that and conquer that, to sometimes to succeed outwardly may be difficult because we have to control our members and, and do things right in order to be able to exercise the spiritual weapon that God has given us effectively, effectively. You know, in that Ephesians, 7, Ephesians 7, 5, 6 that we read, the Bible says that having done not to stand, when your own obedience is complete, then command me, ye me. So the inward battle for us has to be settled. In what battle we have to settle against things, against things that can make us to be not ready for battle, not ready for physical. Look at the life of Zechariah in the book of Zechariah uh, Joshua in the book of Zechariah 3. There was, it was in what battle that was about to overcome him. Because of the war battle that I could not overcome when it came to the physical, it was already defeated, but for the mercy of God. I want to pray this morning, every inward battle, every word engagement that is going on in my heart that may want me to be a miss me for the devil. Lord Jehovah, Lord, help me to bring to control every of my members, my mind, my heart, my spirit, in the name of Job, bringing under the control of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, that the inward battle will not overcome me. Shall we pray? Father, I pray for myself, every inward battle, even weaknesses of character, oh God, that may want to make me, oh God, a casualty for spiritual warfare. Daddy, I pray for myself, my husband, and children, this one, and every one of us on this land. Daddy, that you will give us the power, the authority, oh God, to conquer every conflict within ourselves in the name of Jesus, that we will not become a casualty, even of spiritual warfare in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So we deal with that inward battle. In the, then there are invisible forces. The Bible says, according to what we read in Ephesians 6 12. Now I'm reading from King James Version. Say, for we wrestle not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, of this world, against ritual wickedness in high places. Jesus Christ made us to recognize that our power that, are, that, that we are fighting against. When the, when the disciples came, went out in Luke, I believe, Luke 10, and they said, oh, behold, everybody, that the, the demons were falling, that they were dancing and listening to them. He said, rejoice, not this, but rejoice. He said, I see Satan falling as lightning, you know, and also rejoice not in this. Rejoice that God is on your side. I write that rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. God, that are constant warfare. You know, he said that we fight against powers, against principality, against the unseen forces. So we need to be constantly mindful of the fact that when in spiritual warfare, though we cannot see these forces, they can see us. Just as we cannot see God, but God can see us. You know, we can see God with the eye of our spirit, you know, but there are forces. So we need to imagine that there are forces out there, you know, that, are, that we cannot see, but are engaging in spiritual warfare. Okay, and what does it require then in order to be engaged in this spiritual warfare, not to be a misme, not to be a casualty of this warfare? You need to put on the spiritual weapons, as we have read in that Ephesians chapter 6. So we should put on in name them, no constantly, not one time, but all the time. 
constantly. We must make sure we put on our right garments. For instance, you know, as an attorney, there's a way I have to go to court. I, and, and no matter what, every time, it was just in, uh, in <laughs> even in COVID, even when you are not, when you're not going to court physically in this pandemic, there's a way you have to appear when you go to court. There's a, there's a required regiment. You need to have a regimentary uniform, military uniform where you engage in warfare, just like the military. And that is what it engaged constantly. We must know that even when we are, when, when supposedly we are weak, uh, we are going through some downtime. <laughs> the enemy is not going through downtime. So we need to be mindful of that and be constantly engaged, be constantly ready with our warfare, with our garments, with our spiritual armor at all time, for all season, for all occasion. We cannot afford to be careless. God will not allow us to be careless in Jesus' mighty name. So we have have our, our, our spiritual weapon. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 6, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wear after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling state, through God. So the weapon are mighty through God, not by ourselves, through God that is, we must have made some fulfill, we must have fulfilled some requirement so that through God it's gonna be strong. Our warfare weapon will be strong, you know. He said, but mighty true God to the pulling down of strong old, strong goals that we cannot see, but it's spiritual. We engage in battles that we close our eyes and we, 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 we war, we war in the spirit. It's not physical that we're, by, we're, we're fighting somebody, we can't see those who are fighting, but we're engaged in warfare. He said, we're casting down imaginations and every high thing that results itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I've been in readiness to revenge all disobedience when our disobedience is fulfilled. That's what I meant by our inward, our inward part, our inward conflict. So when our own obedience is perfected, we cannot, then we can find. Uh, um, then we can, we can be bold enough to know that we are not alone on this battle. Everyone is with us. You know? And that was what happened in the life of Samson. Samson was so sure of God's presence was so sure of the weapon of warfare that God has given that he could not never been defeated by the Philistines. As long as he was in God's will, yes, he was successful. But when the spirit of the law, when he has done something and violated the rules and God had to step out of his life, it became a casualty of war. I want us to pray this morning. My father and my God, Lord Jehovah, that is strengthening me in the place of warfare, strengthening me in my inward man, Strengthen me so I will not become victim of spiritual warfare. Lord, empower me anew. Shall we pray? Father, I ask this morning as I come in this twenty-four hour with God, that you empower me, strengthen me. Strengthen me, O oh God Almighty. Strengthen the place of prayer. Strengthen me so I will not become casualty of war. Strengthen me, O oh God, that I will not be a mismit in the hand of my enemy. O oh Lord, strengthen me in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, Lord, strengthen my weapon of warfare. Lord, strengthen my weapon of warfare. Any weak weapon in me, Lord, today come and empower it. Shall we pray? Lord, I pray for my weapons of warfare. Come and strengthen my weapon of warfare. That you come and strengthen my shield of faith, my helmet of salvation, my prayer line. That you strengthen my evangelism line, my good news life. Lord, come and strengthen it, O God, my shield of faith. That you strengthen it, O God, so I will not be a casualty of war. In the name of strengthen my word, like the sword of the spirit. Oh, Lord, that is strengthen my of true, oh Lord God, strengthen all my weapons of warfare this morning in this new month for this new month of July. That is strengthen all my harmony in the name of Jesus, myself, my children, my husband. Let us not be weak in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Of course, you know the easiest way to lose spiritual power is sin. I want you to pray, Lord, that in this month of July, that He deliver me from sin. That He deliver me from sin in the name of Jesus. That is thing that can take away my power. That is that can take away my authority that can take away my confidence. Lord, come and deliver. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you this morning. Every sin, any power of sin that may want to render me weak, even in this month of July, Lord, come and forgive. Oh, Lord God Almighty, I pray that you, oh God, give me grace over sin. In the name of Jesus, read Oh, Lord God Almighty, sin will not render me in powerless. Sin will, render me, will not render me ineffective in the warfare of life, even in this month of July and not the days of my life, I pray for my son, my children, my husband, in the name and everyone of us on this night, Lord, you will strengthen us, oh God. 
in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, and having in readiness to avenge all the when all our obedience is complete, say that's a weapon. Obedience is a weapon if you don't know it. Say, Father, let my obedience be complete in this month of July. Daddy, let my let the devil not fault my obedience in the name of Lord. Cause my obedience to be complete in you in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Lord, I bring myself before you. Let my obedience be perfect. Let my obedience be perfect. Let my obedience be perfect in the name of Jesus. Oh, that is strengthen me in my obedience in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So it requires our spiritual weapons and also it requires a fight of faith. Spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare that we engage in requires a fight of faith. And we know one of the weapons of warfare is a shield of faith. Without faith, we cannot succeed. Without faith, you know, we must, our faith must increase. We must know that when we're engaged in any battle that God has gone ahead of us, that we are not alone in this battle. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. As long as you have not broken the bridge, you have a contract with God. You have not broken that contract. You are in right. You are right to think. You know, therefore, that yes, as you have faith in him and trust in him, he will deliver. <laughs> God will always deliver. He will always deliver. He said, faith, we must have increase our level of faith. First Timothy 6, just say, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are called, and have profess a good profession before many. We must fight with faith. Our faith life must increase. You know, there's nothing God cannot do. There is nothing God cannot do if you believe it. Yes, there is nothing. There is no weapon. There is no warfare that cannot be conquered. I watched a movie on Montagnon this uh, yesterday. Was talking about a woman who, before he met Christ, had done so many so many abortions, and not known to or known to her, a quack doctor had done exterotomy on her. She had no knowledge that she was no longer with anyone. Then she just went to. She was having something and went to another doctor, and they told her that, oh, you know what? You don't have any womb. You can never have any child again. You just don't on her. Unfortunately, there was nothing she could do. Now she gave her life to Christ. Was a very fervent Christian, serious and zealous in Christ. Nobody will even remember the kind of life she used to live. I met a, this this wonderful only son of a, of his parent, a man who was in his forty and ready to settle with her. By the time he told her parent, "Oh, this is the woman I wanted to," you know. And she brought the woman home. Unfortunately, the woman happened to be one of the patients of the mother, of the, the mother-in-law to be, because she was a doctor and she was the one that actually told her that uh, when she had no womb anymore, that uh, the abortion had damaged every her. Uh -huh. Then there was trouble. And the woman, and the woman, and the woman told the, told the boy, you cannot marry this woman because I want to have grandchildren. This one cannot produce any grandchildren. This one cannot give back in life again. Oh, no, no, no. You have to break up with her. You know, and the girl, by the time the man went, say, no, this is a mistake. And I said, no, I know this woman. I've seen her before. I've seen the face before. By the time he went to confront his fiance, she said, yes, I know. I wanted to tell you something about my father. But you always tell me the past doesn't matter. The past matters. Let's settle. Whatever your relationship is always good to be transparent. Settle your parents so that there's transparency and clarity of purpose. By the time he told her, yes, I went through that. I wanted to tell you, but you're the one that did give me the chance to tell you. And he told the man, the man said, oh my God, this is so, you should have insisted that this is too important for me not to hear. And that was the, the conflict in the heart of the poor man. Okay, what do I do? Do I go on with this woman or not? Uh, do I cut it off like my parents want, like my mother wants? And the man had a dream. He slept and had a dream, and in that dream, he saw the that people were killed up before a tap. You know, like when you when want to go fetch water from the tap, city tap in Africa, and they were standing in line. About six people were standing before her, and she came there with and with 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 a basket. You know what a basket? A basket made of wood that cannot contain or hold anything. And she was standing behind the line. Everybody was there. What are you doing here? You want to fetch water with a basket? Everybody had their bucket with them. And she came, say, yeah, I want to fetch water with this basket. And she was laughing. And they said, are you serious? Are you insane? How can you come to draw water in a basket? A basket that is, they cannot hold water. He said she will, that they should just be looking. And they said, okay, everybody now move back and say, okay, go ahead and get water. Let's see what's going to happen. And lo and behold, the woman put the basket behind in, 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 at the top and the basket became filled with water. And after he was filled and was overflowing, 
He said, please, can you help me? I want to carry this bicycle because I need help to put it on my head. Nobody could answer because he was just too flabbergasted, too shocked. It was so unbelievable. And then he looked and saw that the man that he wanted to marry was looking. He said, please, man, can you help me? Please put this on my head. And the man came. Was well, the only one that could help her and put it on her head. And she walked away with a filled basket. <laughs> You know, and it was that faith, it was that revelation that encouraged that man to say, you know, I'm going to go ahead with this woman because I know that with God, all things are possible. And he proved by the time the case, the, they got married, in fact, God visited them with a miracle. So what am I saying? Our faith must increase. Our level of faith, when I want you to pray, say, Father, let my level of faith, your faith increase this month. In this new month of July, Lord, I believe it for the unbelievable. I believe it for the impossible. In the name of Jesus, increase my faith life, shall we pray. Father, I want us to come to you this month, Lord, that the Lord God, the weapon of our warfare, your faith, shield of faith, come and strengthen it, come and energize it the more, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Our weapon, I mean, the, 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 the spiritual warfare demands entire consecration, consecration. In order for us not to be casualty of this warfare, 2 Timothy 2, for say, no man that warrants entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You know, as a soldier, the Bible says we're soldiers, we are calling to battle. Like I said, we're in constant warfare. But he said, hey, man who is engaging in spiritual warfare, you do not mess up with civilians' matter. No. You find out that most civilians in this country, they go hard, they go to battles, they, are, they, they go for training constantly. Their life is not like normal people. No, uh, those who are married to civilian, they they they, they, they they don't see their their husband most of the time. Likewise, we're engaged in battle. You know, we must be mindful that we are in constant warfare. Say so we should not engage war either. Warrant no man that warrant and tagline to say with the affairs of this life. There's so many things that are going on that we should not be engaging because we are not of this because of our call because we are soldier because we are not just civilians, you know? So we have to be mindful of that. He said that he may please, why? That he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You know, we must be in constant warfare and constant, uh, constantly consecrated to what God has called us into. You know, that we are not of this world. We are in, we, are, we need to be mindful of heaven. And so whatever may make us become casualty of our calling, we must stay away from it. There's some, um, Apostle Paul said, all things are lawful, but not things are expedient. That's part of it. It's not everything that is expedient for us as, we, as, as people are engaging in warfare. Some things are okay for other people, you know, but your level of consecration will determine how much you will be useful to God. Amen. So constant spiritual warfare, the hammer of God that we have requires strength. You must depend on God for strength. Okay? The, uh, Isaiah 35, 3 to 4 says, Strengthen ye the weakened and confirm the feebleness. Say, Father, help me not to be weak. In this spiritual warfare, Lord, I receive strength. I receive new strength. I receive new power in the name of Jesus. Even when I'm sleeping, let me be alive. Even when I'm sleeping, let me be, let, let me, let me be constantly secure. Shall we pray? Lord, I have so God strengthen me. In any way that I'm weak in this warfare, Lord, strengthen me, strengthen my husband, strengthen my children. In the mighty name of Jesus, Rika, Boza, Kalia. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. He said, verse 4 of Isaiah 35, he says, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. I want us to pray, Lord, when I say engage in this warfare, Lord, I will not fear. I will not fear what men will do to me. I receive great against fear in the name of God, because he that is in me is greater than he that is in war in the world. Lord, I will be constantly, oh God, unafraid. Shall we pray? Father, we see grace even in this warfare as you're talking about it, that we receive the grace, oh God, of confidence in you that we will not engage in fear in the name of Jesus. Rima Zakatalia. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Uh, the weapons of our warfare, you know, that we have been talking about, some listed in that Ephesians chapter 4 that we read, other and somewhere else. In the Bible, in 1 Samuel 17 to 45, we saw how David said to the Philistine, he said, Thou come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of all, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. The name of Jesus is also part of our hammer <laughs> that we must constantly use. 
call on the name of Jesus. The Bible says at the name, the name that calms our fear. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is all what is that thing that you want to stand in the name of Jesus, it will be destroyed by the name of Jesus. So the name of Jesus is our In the, we must not be far from our mouth. When we come again, we come across some situation and it makes us so fearful, we come against it in the name of Jesus and we see the name answers for us. Second Corinthians 10, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. It's true God. True God, our weapon, I expect you true God, not through our own anything, but through the God. As long as we maintain that connection between us and God, then we know that the weapon will work for us. In the mighty name of your weapon of warfare will work for us, they will not work against us in Jesus' mighty name. And then we talk about the element of salvation. Let's not lose our salvation, let's not lose, not lose our connection with the Holy Spirit. Also, he said the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The more God's word we have, the more successful we're gonna become. You know, when God for last year, we were kind we, we relied on Psalm 491 throughout the pandemic, and it worked for us, you know. But look at those in India. They could not rely on their God, their God. They had to throw away and destroy their God because their God didn't answer for them. But look at us. Because we believe the name of the Lord Jesus, and we rely on that name, he worked for us. And he will continue to work for us in the mighty name of Jesus. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hebrews 4, 12 says, for the word of God is quick. The word of God on its own, just that weapon alone, not talking about the of salvation, not talking about the, uh, about the shield of faith, not talking about uh, the buckle of truth, but just the word of God alone. He says in Hebrews 4, it's quick for the word of God. The sword of this quick is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Pierce even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow. And it's a designer of thought and intent of the heart. Are you going through anything and you receive the word of God? It's a weapon for that situation. Many times in my life, you know, there was a time that a guy I helped decided to take me to the uh, <laughs> to, to the attorney grievance committee. This somebody I help, I did all I could to help. You know, my husband said, this man, and I did. And then for his own fault, he now put my name that I was the one who did something wrong with this case. You know, by the time I went to God and said, Lord, give me a word. And he gave me a word, even though the battle was still home, but because of the word of God, I was, I saw the end of that battle already and it came to pass. So we need to stay in that word. It's quick, it's powerful. You know, it's, it's a weapon that we can use against the enemy within and outside. Enemy within us, if you have the right word, we can come against whatever it is that is limiting the power of God in us. Like a pastor was saying the other day, uh, 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 was talking about what 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 is it that is lacking? Is the patient that we don't have? Is it for forgiveness? Pick up a word of God in it. I remember when I first got married, I was going through some struggles and challenging time, and and I didn't even have anybody to talk to. I was so far away from the people that that I I mean that I could call on. You know, no mother, nobody. But I went. I said, God, I went to the Word of God, and from the Word of God, I was able to get weapons that could help me and see me through my challenges in my marriage. So the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper, it's enough, it's sufficient. So the more of the world we have, the more success we're going to have in this battle of life. I want to encourage us to spend more time in the world than we have done in the past. You know, the world should be close to our mouth. It's our weapon of warfare. Say, Father, give me the grace to dwell in your word more than ever before. Daddy, come and give me more power of the sword of the spirit. Let me alive reflect more power in the sword of the spirit as I continue the journey of July. Lord, let me dwell more in this world. Let your world make more meaning for me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. But also, the Bible says in Revelation 12 1, that we overcame him by the blood of the another weapon that we can use, armor, that we must constantly is the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony, when you talk about the blood of the lamb, you know, have you been in an accident before? I know by before anything, I'm on the road, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus must be close to our mouth because there is power. You know, we may not see because we are fit, we are, we are not in the spirit. You, so you don't see what that blood does in the kingdom of darkness. So when something is going on in the blood and you speak it, so let the blood not be far from your mouth. Soak yourself in your blood, call upon the blood of Jesus. There is power in that blood, the blood of Jesus. And also the words of our testimony. What is the words of our, of our testimony? The works of God in our life. Things that he has done in the past, they are a sufficient weapon of warfare. They are part of a weapon of warfare. 
the testimonies of God's word. He did this. You know, look at the Bible. If you look at Psalms 103, 104, 107, you see how they recollected and recounted what God did in Israel. What God did in Egypt, to Israel in Egypt. Oh, how you led them for, how you lifted them out. Also, when, uh, when, um, when King uh, Jehoshaphat was in battle and he had to confront the Assyrian that rose against him, Syria that came against him, he used the word, oh Lord, this is the people, this is what you did, how you did not allow us to, come to destroy them when we're going out of, out of Egypt. These are the same people that fought us. So it's good to recount the testimonies of the past. What God has done in the past is works in the past. They are, they are a weapon because when you record this, what God he energizes your faith and give you a bo spiritual buoyancy that this God is enough, is sufficient, is enough for us, is capable, is dependable, is reliable. He has done it before, he will do it again. There is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing that is coming against us now that he cannot do because he has done it before. So the, the word of God. The blood, the blood of the Lamb, what of our testimony, the works of God in our life, and even in the life of other people. And that's why it's good to share testimony. Oh, the Lord did it for me, you do it for you, as you key into that testimony. Amen. Father Amos is, is the hammer of light. Romans 13, 12 said, the night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the hammer of light. Second Corinthians 6, 7 said, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the hammer of righteousness. On the right hand and on the left, righteousness, we know, is a, a, the breastfeed put on the breastfeed of righteousness on the right, on the left at all times. Righteousness at all times. It's not in today, down tomorrow, half today, uh, uh, down tomorrow. No, righteousness will be at all times. And the Lord give us grace in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible also says in the book of First Confirming what we have in, in Ephesians 10, and now we're going to pray. He says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. Now he say breastplate of faith and love and for an enemy, the hope of salvation. You know, that's what we need to put on constantly, not just in the beginning of the month, not the first two days, the first three days. I know we are so, 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 so high spirited the first few days of the month. And then we let down our God. No, it has to be a constant warfare because we don't know what we're engaging in. You know, uh, whether we like it or not, we may not see it. You know, I was sleeping the other yesterday, and the Lord opened my eyes to see, you know. Uh, and God, if God opened, constantly God is ready to open our eyes, and we must be ready to see. And I pray that God will open our eyes to know that though we, in this world, we do not want to get special and blah, blah, and that are constant warfare. We engage in constant warfare. The mindset of being in constant warfare will help us to see, to be mindful how we live our life on a daily basis, even to fight against inward enemy, and also to know that there are physical battles. Now, I want us to pray. The Bible says that, uh, as you know that this warfare, one thing I want us to take away is the conclusion that the divine protection is guaranteed. Divine protection is guaranteed because we are on God's side. You know, we are on God's side. Bible says in 2 Chronicles 69, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro, through her the whole heart, to show himself strong in the behalf of them who sat is perfect, who sat is perfect toward him. Hear me, thou art done foolish, therefore from her so thou shalt have war. He said, Who art is perfect? The eyes of God is always running through, is always shielding us, is always on our behalf, you know. There was another dream that I, I mean, a Montana movie that I just saw when I have a little time. I don't have much time, but just the snippet of their movie is very powerful. That lady was sleeping and then the enemy was strangled her, was trying to strangle her because of all the our prayers. So she came into her room, entered to her room, I was strangled, but the lady was just sleeping without any disturbance. And then the devil came next to the guy and said, stop doing that, stop screaming as, as, as the man was using whatever yeah, um, uh, voodoo that I was using to struggle. It was the devil that was doing that, oh, you struggle. And then he said, beating them. I said, you strangulating me. This, you don't touch this one. This one is the anointed. You cannot touch that. Get away from here. Ah, he said, yeah, but he's doing a lot of effort. I said, yes, sorry, this one is beyond me. That's what the devil telling, telling the, the guy. He said, this one is too much for me. And then they wanted to leave. They didn't know how to leave. Their power was destroyed. And that is what it is with the child of God. So we must be mindful so that we are in, we are, we are engaging in warfare, but our own person, we must be 
ready that we have done and won't fire and God will do his part. Psalm 34, 7, 6, the angel of the Lord is coming around about them that fear him and deliver. I want us to pray, Father, as I continue this warfare, in my life, Lord Jehovah, let your angel continue to encamp around me in the name of Jesus. Let me not do anything, oh God, that will cost your 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 that will cost your strength and that will cost me to lose your power. That will cost me, oh God, to lose your assistance in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me. Help me in the name of Jesus. Let your angel continue to encamp around me, around my camp, around the camp of my family and household and ministry throughout the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, keep me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Psalm 91, 4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and other his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Say, Father, let your truth be my shield as I hold on to the word of truth, which is the, which is the sword of the Spirit. That your God let me continue to trust in your word. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you because of divine assurance of your protection. I will not lose it. My family will not lose it. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray? Makaza tali erebosha, makaza kata leba kodo zanda gali erebosha kele bakoria. Ye mazaka talia, daddy, keep us, oh God. In the name of, we will not lose your divine protection. We will not lose you. We will not lose it. We will not lose it by your mercy. Angel will encamp around us and it shall be well with us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Psalm 125 from verse 1 and 2 say, The shall, they that are trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, We cannot be removed. But I buy them forever. As the mountains are around about Jerusalem, so the Lord is around about his people from henceforth, even forever. I say, Father, I trust in your presence. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, Lord, surround me and my family, surround me and my church, surround me and my ministry, surround me and all that pertains to me. As I join in the month of July and the rest of my life, oh Lord, surround me. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, surround me. My cousin Talia, surround my household, surround my ministry, surround my calling. In the name of Jesus, not by anything, but by your mercy. Mercy in the name of Jesus, oh God, you say you will never leave nor forsake me. So, Lord, surround my children in the name of Jesus, surround us against every evil, surround us against every attack in the mighty name of Jesus. That he protect us, surround us, hide us in you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to pray, Lord, that in everything that is going on around us, oh God, no matter what they say concerning this COVID-19, concerning this variant, Lord, God, surround us. In the name of Jesus, oh, Daddy, surround us. Keep us, oh God, from every attack. Keep us from every evil. Keep us from every calamity. Keep us from every plague. The Bible said, no evil shall come near us, oh, and no place shall come near our dwelling. Shall we pray? Father, we have so God Almighty, we stand upon the word, upon the promise that you said, oh, God Almighty, no evil will come near us, oh God, no plague will come near our dwelling. No matter what is going on with this COVID-19 law, we identify with you that you will shield us you protect us in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray zachariah 2 45 says and said unto him run speak to this young man saying jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls men and cattle there why for high said the lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. I say, Father, thank you for you are uh, the wall of fire around me and all that belongs to me. Thank you because you are the glory within, you are the glory in my life, within my home, within my ministry, within my church, within all that pertains to me. Thank you for surrounding me with wall of fire, shall we pray? Father, in the name of God, we thank you for the confidence that we have, that you are a wall of fire around about us, oh God. Thank you, oh God Almighty, for the promise of your presence. In the name of Jesus, thank you because you will always be a wall of fire around about us, God. In daytime, during the night time, even when we're sleeping, thank you for your around us and in the zone to lay Galeba Korea. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let us begin to pray, Lord, as we continue. Lord Jehovah, Lord, I receive power, I receive fire, I receive strength, even in this ritual warfare, in the name of Jesus, I receive power, I receive fire, I receive strength, I receive revelation, I receive light, all that I need to know, even to, to succeed in spiritual warfare, I receive it today, shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning, I receive fire, I receive your power, I receive your fire, I receive your power, 
I receive everything that I need to continue to succeed in the weapon to in, in, in the spiritual wealth, in the spiritual, in the spiritual warfare, in the name of God for myself, my children, my husband. Lord, we receive power that we need, we receive the fire that we need, we receive the power, the light, the revelation, oh God, that we need in the name of Jesus, not to be a smithsman in the hand of the devil. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I want us to pray for one of our children who is in the hospital right now. He was involved in an accident. I want us to pray for our Lord, restore this daughter of Zion. Oh, Lord, restore her completely. And we're going to use her as a point of contact to all those who are sick. Lord, visit the sick, make them whole, shall we pray? Father, we pray for your daughter. Lord, visit and restore her. Lord, there is nothing you cannot do. Lord, heal her, restore her in the name of Jesus. That you visit in that hospital and make her whole. Every broken bone, let it be healed. Every broken flesh, let it be healed in the name of Jesus. And spending as I see this morning, we bring them before you that you will heal, you will make all, you will restore in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And I want us to declare as we journey the journey of July, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive the great evil to succeed. I to overcome every battle. I didn't mean the road that we can notice upon my life throughout this month. Lord, in the name of God, I remain victor. My family is a victor. Shall we pray? That you will decree upon the month of July, we subdue you in the name of Jesus. That you will decree in this month of July, oh, we overcome. We overcome the powers of darkness. We subdue everything that wants to come against us. Oh, God, we take authority. We take power. That you will say, Lord, oh, we overcome. Come, we rule, we subdue, we dominate in this month. Our servant family will not be victim of wickedness of men. Thank you, Father, because the rod of wicked not rest upon us. Thank you for everything that you have assured us your protection, your love, your mercy, your favor. And that will follow us throughout the days of this month. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And Father, we thank you. We bless your name for another weekend, another first Saturday in the month of July. That we see, Lord, our prayer point tonight, even this morning, the blood of Jesus, and we declare that in this month of God, oh, Lord, Lord, you said that you are favor. You said for it's time for you to favor Zion, for the time to favor has come. Lord, we ask, oh God, in this month of July, according to your word, you will favor us by homies in the name of you. In all battle, we shall be favored over everything that they're going to examine us. Favor shall follow in the works of our life, in our work with you. Mercy will answer for all. Favor will answer for all. You your grace will answer for all. Your protection will answer for all. Your peace will answer for all. Your prosperity shall be our portion. We shall live, will not die to fulfill your work in the land of the living. We shield ourselves and we release your blood upon our life, upon our doubles, upon our work. Throughout this month, as many as about this month of July, you will exempt us. We will not become a casualty. We will not head up in hell. We will not head up in hellfire. We will not head up in hell. We shall not be with ourselves and family and loved ones and children. We are shield. We are shielded by your blood throughout the days of this month and the rest of this year. Thank Thank you, Father, for energizing us. Thank you for waking us up, O oh God. Thank you for strengthening us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank all the members of Victoria Intercessory Prayer Ministry. We'll meet next Saturday again at our usual time. Thank you, everyone. The 24 hour continue. Our next session will be from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Brother Noah. Bye.